box. So, whoo, it is windy. There it goes. You got it, little buddy. You got this. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California. This channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. Out this morning, checking on all the chickens. We have got so much going on. Here's Roscoe and two of his ladies, my big flock. The meaties are gonna be put in here for today. Let my beautiful rescue hens out. Good morning, ladies. They're like, uh, it's a little early. So see, this water is just a little bit too big. I mean, a little bantam chick's gonna be down here. They might not even be able to get that high, but I've got a little one. Good morning, everybody. So there are the ladies. I'm not gonna bother them right now. They had four chicks last night and I saw at least one more hatching. So I'm hoping there's five babies in there today. All right. And this is a nice little feeder for the babies because they can get in there. And obviously the big ones have no problem eating out of that too. But they need to fix this door. <laughs> Check on all the young chicks that are in the garage. Good morning, everybody. Got our meaties here. And all the chicks. Everyone looks happy. Yep. It's gonna be hot today. I'm thinking probably 90. So I'll come back home probably around 10. I'll open the garage, I'll open the window, I have a fan I turn on and I will unplug all their heaters. The young chicks, which they're pushing, they're almost a week old. So for their first week, I believe they need to stay around 95 degrees. Well, our garage is probably almost 80 years old. There's no insulation, there's holes. So it gets really hot in the day and it gets really cold at night. So I don't wanna overcook those babies. So we'll get some air moving in here during the day. And it's really easy to see because if they're hot, they'll actually pant, which it means they're really hot. And if they're cold, if I were to unplug the heaters, if they're all under that heater, that means they're cold. I would know to plug it back in. But I don't think that's gonna be a problem today. So I'm gonna get these kids taken care of, and then I'm gonna take some fresh fermented food out to the big flock. Okay, I just went ahead and opened our garage now. It's still a little cool this morning, but all their heaters are on, and because it's supposed to be 90 today, I probably should start airing out the garage now. I have this chick starter feed, and I just filled all their feeders. So they've all got fresh food. And I'm just gonna go ahead and top off all their water today. And then probably at the end of today, I'll dump all these and put fresh water in. I like to just fully dump it every few days because they don't drink it all the way to the bottom, which you wouldn't want that anyways. But it just kind of keeps things fresh. But everyone is looking really good this morning. I recently got asked if I have a heat lamp. So this right here, that metal piece in there, that's actually the heater. It puts off no light. Heat lamps aren't terrible. They're not the best thing, but this helps them sleep better because there's no light. Also, they say heat lamps can cause fires. I mean, plenty of people use heat lamps, but you definitely need to just know what could happen and to be very careful. You know, they make, um, heaters for just you know if you want to make a brooder in a big tub or whatever they make them on Amazon I don't know what they're called they'll try to find something and put it in the description but you just lift them up and put them down and they're flat like this and they don't put off any light those are definitely safer that's where the heat source is in my brooder here is my little baby waterer I normally would actually even put this on a little tray so they just can't like kick garbage in it but since this is my first time doing bantam chicks, 
I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it flat. I got this little bucket of pebbles. I'm gonna fill it up. Just like I said, I have not had bantams before. I wanna be extra safe. I'm fill up this guy. I already had a few, but they're pretty tiny. They're pretty tiny. Don't want to take any chances of losing one. Alrighty, you got food and water for the day. Hopefully everyone's happy. I apologize I didn't start this video sooner, but here, my last, uh, I normally buy crumble actually, but I have found that I like pellets better for fermented food. So I just have a five gallon bucket. I filled up about halfway and then I'm adding water. You want to have about an inch or two of water over the top. So that's good. I also need to start getting like some seeds and stuff to mix in here. They'll start to sprout a little bit and that's great. And then if you have, you can put like a paper towel, I mean like a cloth, any of that. I just have this like, it's this like pot thing. I just loosely lay it over and then you give that, you stir it and add water for three days and then it's ready. Fermented food. I was just mowing the vineyard. I'm almost finished, which is great. And I just found out that they delivered my injection pump, which is for fertilizer to put it in, inject it into my drip line. So I'm gonna head over there and get my fertilizer in. This is my first fertilizer of the year and I'll show you guys how I do that. So this is my irrigation filtration system. The water comes from the river, comes over, goes through these filters and then there's an underground system that pushes it out into my drip irrigation. Okay, so this is an injector pump right here, and this has my fertilizer in it, and then this has potassium in it, but they can't mix. So we're going to start with the fertilizer. There's hoses. They, the injector pump sucks the fertilizer out. It runs through this pump very quickly, and then it goes over here and into my drip line. So the water will push it through, and it'll go out to my field. So I just ran my regular irrigation last night. So the ground's already wet. So you want to make sure that the ground's a little wet before you start applying the fertilizer. And then I'll run irrigation for about an hour after the fertilizer just to make sure the lines get clean and all that kind of good stuff. All right, now I just have to wait a second. And I should hear the irrigation click on and we'll hear all this stuff running there. I just heard it click. So pretty soon I'll hear the air coming out up there. You can hear the air and next will be my pump here will turn on. All right, irrigation is on. Just gonna give it a couple minutes and then I will turn on the injector pump and we'll get that going. So now I've got it marked where the fertilizer is in there and I'm just gonna wait a few minutes to see how much it sucks it down. And that'll give me an idea of how long it needs to run. I'm doing 175 gallons per block and they're 25 acre blocks. So, whoo, it is windy. Um, so after 175 gallons, I'll need to shut this off, run the irrigation for another hour, and then I'll turn on the second block. Jason here from Pioneer. We're going to plant a test plot. Correct. Is this his first year this seed has been planted? Some of them. Some of them. Okay, here we go. So what do you expect to see from this seed? Do you, are, do you have like expectations yet or not nothing? To beat what you're planting already. To beat what we're planting already, which is already pretty good. Yeah. 
or is it just my dad? Is it the seed or is it's it both. my dad? <laughs> Are you gonna vacuum it out? Yep. Okay, so first he has to vacuum out all the seed that's in there and then we'll put the new stuff in. And we're only gonna do four rows. There's the corn vacuum. New secret seed. <laughs> Not one kernel. So nice and clean. I'm gonna rebag them. All right, they're all empty. just our normal corn, right? Correct. Right. So these first four rows is our normal what we're planting and then those four are the test plot. So Vicente does all our planting. He's done it as long as I can remember. There it goes. I thought about trying to fly the drone, but it's too windy, so it's not going to happen. All right, we just finished planting the Pioneer plot. Pretty much what it is, is when Pioneer has some new seed they wanna test out, they reach out to their growers and we plant a little piece. They check it a few times during the growing year and then when we harvest it, Jason will come back out and he brings his own little hopper that has a weight, you know, and all that and we harvest it for them and then they can use that hopefully to make the corn seed better and we get a little free seed. So hey, it works for everybody. But that's all done. Vicente just filled up the rest of his planter. He's getting some fertilizer and he'll be back planting. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. So earlier I just shut off my irrigation when everything was done and then I went over to the Pioneer plot. But now I still need to run the second set because I irrigate my vineyard in two different blocks. So I'm gonna get everything back running and then I'll just set an alarm for about an hour. That's when I'll shut the fertilizer off. And then an hour after that, I'll shut all the irrigation off and then it should be good to go. Just got home and checked on the Bantams. They've got their five babies out 
and one of the eggs in there has really good hole and I can see the beak moving. So I'm feeling confident we're gonna have at least one more. And one egg has just a little pip on it. Um, and that's normally how it starts. It just looks like a little break pushing out. So there's a chance there could be two more. This is crazy. I, I can't believe like how well they're doing. And also like Roscoe was on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so five healthy babies for sure. Hopefully we get a six and maybe a seven. You can do it, little baby. You can do it. They actually have like a little spike on their nose. I'm sure there's a technical term for it, but you can kind of see it there. And that helps them break out of the shell. And then once they get out, it just slowly falls out. You got it, little buddy. You got this. Time flies when you're having fun. Why didn't you guys tell me my face was filthy? Just came home and it was dirty. So I washed my face, <laughs> took care of the chickens a little, and now we're heading back to the farm to shut the fertilizer tank off. And we have to let the water run for another hour before I can shut it off. Let's go. Okay, now one more hour to flush the lines and we'll shut the irrigation off. Five o'clock, not too bad. Okay, home for the evening. Got a lot done today, kind of, I think. Um, just gonna do a final little evening check on the chickens and then go have dinner. Earlier today, I moved the meaties over here. I had them in that coop, but they were getting hot. I have got to get them in that one. You guys are gonna keep hearing me say it and eventually I'm gonna get them in the omelet go. But they're happy little birds. I ended up keeping all of the chickens in our run today because last night the chicks had a little bit of a hard time figuring out how to get back in the coop, which normally I do kind of keep them in the run for probably like a week or so before I start letting them free range. So I should have known better. But, so I kept them all in today, so hopefully they'll all get in there pretty good. And my rescues are looking good. And then we have the Banta Mommy, who earlier the egg was cracking. Oh, it's still cracking. I feel like it's gotten a little bit bigger. I'm trying to decide if I need to intervene or let it do it itself. So the eggs were right here and what I ended up doing was shoving them back under the mamas and see if that helps. There are definitely times that you need to intervene, but these hens have been doing such an amazing job that I really don't want to intervene unless needed. I have never cracked open an egg for a chick to get out but I've done some reading and if you do it too soon you can badly damage them or kill them because the egg has their like umbilical cord and um, different blood veins that have to dry up for the chick to get out so if you start peeling it back and it wasn't ready yet you can't actually kill the chick and that chick is peeping in there it's got a little bit of a bigger hole than it did earlier so I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. Um, it's 6.30, so maybe I'll come back in two hours right before it gets dark and see if it's done anything else. But the mamas have all those babies, so they weren't laying right on top of the egg. So I just kind of tucked them back in there and we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that uh, it gets out okay. I've well, I hope you all have enjoyed today's video. I appreciate you guys sticking around. I hope you hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up and feel free to share my channel with your friends. I'm really enjoying it and I hope you guys are too. I will catch you later. <music>